Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you a brief PagerDuty tutorial for beginners. Now, this video will help you get started by providing the step-by-step -step guide to PagerDuty. So without further ado, let's get started. First off, what we have here is the onboarding dashboard of PagerDuty. And as you can see, we're currently using a free trial, which of course we can freely upgrade to a subscription if we'd like, since of course it only lasts for a while if you're on their free trial. Now, PagerDuty is a powerful tool for incident management designed to alert and organize teams around real-time issues. If you're new to PagerDuty, then we're going to show you how to get started right here. So first up, you need to create an account with PagerDuty. So just uh, type in PagerDuty on your browser and you should see it right here. This uh, green logo here with the letter P. And then from there, you can just click on start for free or log in if you already have an account. But basically, if you don't, you're going to try clicking on start for free and then you're just going to provide a work email and then follow the prompts necessary to get started with your account. So after that, then you'll be greeted with this landing page. And as you can see, if you're a beginner account, then there are some steps you need to do to complete the onboarding process. So we're going to try to check what they are. As you can see here, you can receive a test notification. So you can enter your phone number and receive a test notification via phone or SMS. So there's that. And you can also add your team members. It's optional, but uh, it's necessary if uh, you have a lot of people on your team. So just navigate to people, users, and invite your team members to page your duty. This is an optional step and can be completed later. You can also watch a one minute video if you want more uh, elaborate info on how to do this. PagerDuty is generous enough to show us the ropes. And then you can also create an on call schedule right here. So navigate to people and then on call schedules to map out your coverage needs. Again, they have a two minute video tutorial for this. If you want to see that for yourself, then there's also escalate incidents to the right people. So you can do this by navigating to people and then escalation policies to update your escalation policy and get incidents to the right people. There's a one minute uh, video tutorial for this as well. Now connect to an integration. You can navigate the services, select a service, then navigate to the service integrations tab to add an integration. Again, there's also a one minute uh, video tutorial for this. If you're a visual learner, which is very helpful. And then finally, receive and respond to incidents. So trigger an incident from the service integration you added. Alternatively, you can click new incident from any service page. So that's what we have for the onboarding process. And now we're going to take a look at our uh, dashboard right here. And as you can see, we have the incidents over here. They're all incidents, alerts, visibility console, jelly post. Incident reviews, postmortems, incident roles, some settings for here for over this section. Services, we have the directory, business services, service graph, and then people. We have the on call shifts, schedules, escalation policies, user teams. So we're going to head to this part later. I'm just going to do a quick view of our dashboard. We have the automation actions, incident workflows, AI ops right here event orchestration recent changes we have the analytics so the dashboard insight operational reviews so on and the integrations for extensions service integrations we're going to get into that later as well so first up we have here the dashboard we have the incidents on all teams and it's all uh, currently reported that there are zero triggered zero acknowledged so on all time right here so if, there, if there's any report, then of course you would see the uh, data right here for open. We have this filter system. So open, triggered, acknowledge, resolved, or any status right there. So there's also priority, urgency, and then the title. So if you want to create a service or a new incident, you can get started here. First with incident. Click on the plus icon or plus button right here for new incident. And we're going to check this out real quick. Then here, just put in the details for the new incident. So we have the title, 
impacted service and then the description right here and then the urgency how responders are notified high or low priority so it's listed as such p1 to p5 and then assignee so you can assign uh the people that are in your team right here and for advanced options you can add additional responders to help from escalation policies or users right here and then there's a dial-in number so you can include a dedicated conference number on the incident so just use this format right here where a comma represents a one second pause and the number sign completes the access code input you can also add a meeting url if you want to and then after that you can already go ahead and create an incident so that's how you create an incident we're just going to head back right here and then here for your tools add all your tools to begin monitoring your systems today you can add new services from here so just click that button then there's a step-by-step -step process right, right here. So name and description, a technical service reflects a discrete piece of functionality that is wholly owned by one team. One or more technical services combined to deliver customer facing or business capabilities. So these are example names of technical services. So you can just go on and name your service right here and then add a description and then follow to assign, reduce noise, and then integrations. So I'm gonna head back to our dashboard once more. Then here for your team, you can add your colleagues over here. Right there. So currently, I'm the only user in this uh, team. But you can add users by uh, inputting these details. So just the first name, last name, uh, email address, and then license if necessary. Or rather, if they've subscribed to uh, PagerDuty or if they're a trial stakeholder, base role you can add assign roles right here global admin manager responder observer stakeholder limited stakeholder and restricted access so here this is optional since there's no teams available yet and then once we've filled in the details then click on add and they'll be added to the team so that's how that works then we're going to head back to our dashboard here and you can also create an on-call schedule from here so here just schedule name and then teams right here time zone you can edit that and then description for optional add users right here set up an on-call rotation so it can be done weekly daily or custom customized and then there's a handoff time there's also restrict on-call shifts to specific times so right there if you have a if you're trying to adhere to a specific schedule then you can do that right here then you can start time for this layer over here and then this is the configuration layers and then the final schedule right over here so once you're done or satisfied with your settings just click on save schedule and here we're just going to head back again and show you real quick the integrations right here so the extensions we have Slack integration, Microsoft Teams, Amazon Event Bridge, Salesforce, Live Call Routing. So we have we can see a lot of familiar integrations, and you can all uh, check that out if you want to add those to your Pager Duty. And that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.